faith has found a resting place Not in device or creed I trust the ever-living one His wounds for me shall plead I need no other argument I need no other plea It is enough that Jesus died And that he died for me Enough for me Jesus saves This ends my fear And doubt A sinful soul I come to Him He'll never cast Me out I need no Other argument I need No other Plea It is enough That Jesus died My heart is leaning on the word, the living word of God. Salvation by my Savior's name, salvation through His blood. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Bethel Church of the Nazarene in Laville. So glad you're able to join us this morning. Uh, we are a people that exist to develop spirit-led, Christ-led disciples in our church and in our community. And so part of Sunday worship, our Sunday service, is that we can grow closer to Him and grow in a deeper walk with Jesus. That our lives will be changed and transformed from the inside out. I'm so glad you're able to join us today. Uh, pray that all is well with you and your family. Hear the word from Luke chapter 24, verse 13. And behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were conversing with each other about all the things which had taken place. And it came about that while they were conversing and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they stood still, looking sad. And one of them, named Cleopas, answered and said to him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem, and the only one unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, the things about Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, in the sight of God and all the people. 
and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, it is the third day since these things have happened. But also some women among us amazed us. When they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself and all the scriptures. And they approached the village where they were going, and he acted as though he would go farther. And they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. And he went in to stay with them. And it came about that when he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it, and breaking it, he began giving it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they arose that very hour, returned to Jerusalem, and found gathered together the eleven and those who were gathered with them, saying, The Lord has really risen, and he has appeared, and he has appeared to Simon. And they began to relate their experiences on the road, and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread, the word of the Lord. Let us pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, and no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
passage for this morning's sermon. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 13. Therefore, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you address as Father the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay upon earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood, as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have obedience to truth, purify your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. Fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable, that is, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord abides forever. And this is the word which was preached to you. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, again, we continue to thank you and praise you because you were the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who brought back Jesus from the dead after three days. And so, Lord, we give you praise and glory this day for the new life that we have. And that, Father, that we have a hope that is beyond this place. That this place is temporary. This dwelling place, this, this world in which we live is temporary. For one day it will all be gone. But, Lord, we will reside with you in that eternal dwelling place. Father, thank you for the hope that we have in you. In the midst of days that are may seem dark and, and long and, and lonely, that we can hold on to you in, in all circumstances, in all situations, to know that you are with us, Lord, you even hold us in the palm of your hand. In the midst of our journeys of life, we thank you that you are with us. Father, whether we are pilgrims or aliens or in exile or, Father, just in that moment of pause as we are today, surround us now. Father, we know the conversations we've been having and, and knowing that we want to get back together to be the body of Christ that gathers together. Or to be the community that can gather together and, and, and break bread and, and have fellowship and, and just have conversation face to face. We know that one day that'll take place. But here in these moments... We still praise you. We still bless your name. Father, thank you for the work that you've been doing in our lives in these days. Thank you for what you're revealing to us about ourselves, about, about the church, about your body, about what you're calling us to do and to be. So Lord, we lift to you the requests of our hearts in these moments. Father, we pray for those who have lost loved ones recently. And the difficulty it is to not be able to gather together to remember and tell stories. 
to mourn and grieve together. Father, we lift to you those who are struggling physically, emotionally, spiritually. Father, that you, in your infinite grace, will bestow your mercy upon them. Build them up. Encourage them, O Lord. Father, we thank you that Easter is not just one time a year. That the resurrection, we don't just celebrate and remember once, but Father, it's every day. It's every Sunday we can gather together to say He has risen. And that is the living hope in which we gather into this day. Renew us and strengthen us. Open wide our hearts and our minds as we hear Your Word proclaimed. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It was one, almost one year ago, that we started a journey in our, by ourselves, as a family. We entered into this journey that God was calling us to a new place. Journeys. We all have journeys. Some of us have maybe lived in the same home that we grew up in. Some of us have moved around to different parts of, of the country or, or New York State. Uh, some of us are in different journeys personally. That maybe we, some of us, our journey started in church and we kind of grew up in the church and kind of stayed there. And so we know who Christ is and we've seen Christ at work and, and we know His redeeming love in our lives. We, we celebrate that He is risen uh, our whole lives, right? Each and every day. For some of us, that, that journey of, of following Christ and understanding and knowing who Jesus is as Lord and Savior uh, came a little bit later in life. And so that you have grown in His grace just as much as the person who, is, who received Him as a young child. Journeys. We all have a journey. We all are on a movement going from point A to point B. But a year ago, we started this journey of moving to, to Lowville. Not knowing what we were really saying yes to. But we knew that we had to say yes to Jesus. In the midst of the journey of, of, of the call upon our lives to say yes to Him, no matter where He calls us, no matter what goes on in life, that we will say yes to Him. On that day 2,000 years ago, as we heard in, in the Gospel according to Luke, the road, of, road to Emmaus, right? The two disciples who were walking the road away from Jerusalem, going to Emmaus, and then all of a sudden, Jesus just, poof, out of thin air, uh, just appears next to them. They didn't recognize him. What journey are you on? What does your journey of faith look like right now? I, I know I'm excited. I I've heard uh, one story in particular about an individual who, uh, who's read through the Bible, but has been spending more time focusing and reading through the Old Testament. And how cool it's been. What a new journey of eyes being open, ears being open to hear and to see God at work in the Old Testament. Not only was there a journey for the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, but then you had the people that Peter was writing to. Right? Last week we looked at those people in exile the aliens, the strangers in a new and different land, a different area of, of what was now uh, Turkey. And, and, and so they're in this new place, whether they're escaping some sort of persecution or maybe they're facing persecution even there, life is different. The journey that they were expecting and following Jesus was not this. And Peter reminds them, Life is beyond this physical place in which we live, that we have another home that we'll be called to at some point. But even before that, that 
There is a, we have a living hope. We have a living hope in the resurrected Christ. We have a new life in him. So let's live that way no matter where we are. Even if you're called or sent to Lowville, New York, to pastor. Even if you're the place in which you work or live, God is calling us all out to live that resurrection in front of the world. That, that living hope. Are you holding on to that living hope? Not a hope that just kind of maybe will be there. Maybe we'll get that eternal reward. Or, or maybe we'll get to that home that's away from this place. A, a place that will never go away. And where for some of us, we're holding on to those things that are comfortable. And sometimes as a follower of Christ, we are called into the uncomfortable. The people that Peter's writing to are in a place where they're uncomfortable. It's different. It's unknown. It's strange. They're aliens, not green with antenna, but they're aliens in a new land. They're, they're foreigners. They're in exile, if you will. What does Peter tell them to do? He doesn't say, hunker down in your home, lock the door, throw away the key and stay there and just remain there until Jesus comes, which they were expecting Jesus to come at any point in time. No. He said, live it out. You hear that? Verse 13. Therefore, remember what happened before? Now, let's pay attention to what's happening as well. Therefore, gird your minds. Prepare your minds for action. Are you preparing your mind for action of living out this hope that's been pressed within you? The resurrection, the new life of Jesus? Keep sober in mind. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And see, see, Paul is reminding them that, hey, you still need to be examples. You still need, God is still calling you to live that hope out, even in a foreign place. Even in a place where maybe they're calling you bad names. Maybe in a place where they just don't respect you. And all you want to do is shut the door, lock it, and stay inside for fear of what may be coming through the doors of life. Peter talks about fear. Talks about the fear of God. But that's not a fear that we should be scared of, but this awe. This wonder of who God is. So how are you preparing yourself for the journey in which God is calling you to right now? Are you preparing your mind? Are you fixing your eyes on, on Jesus? Not in the crazy circumstances, but fixing ourselves in, in a way that our lives would be holy as God is holy. That's part of the living hope. Is that the one who is saved, is that, that we are called into that existence of being holy, not because we can do it ourselves, because the one who saves us is calling us to be like him, that he would make us holy. That when, when God sees us, that, that he would see Jesus, the one who is holy. That the things of this earth will grow strangely dim is basically what he's saying, right? You have been bought, not you've been purchased, not with silver or gold, things that can just go away, but you've been bought with the precious blood of the Lamb, Jesus the Christ, and through his sacrifice, that you can be made whole, you brought into the family, can be renewed. with 
precious blood, as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Church, I don't know about you, but we're on a journey, aren't we? We're on a journey to be holy as He is holy. We're on a journey to, to know Him, not just in a personal way, but to know Him in a way that worships Him, that brings glory to Him. No matter what we're going through, whether you feel like an exile, whether you feel out of place, whether you feel burdened, that Jesus is who He says He is. And we're called to worship Him no matter the circumstance. That's the journey of life we're on. Whether it's called, being called to, to Lava in New York and Man, it's been a great 10 months of, of learning and growing and, and seeking God with you and being transformed by Him. Maybe you're on this journey and your eyes just have not been open. Maybe you hear, but you don't see. Like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They heard what this stranger was saying. But they didn't understand until their eyes were opened to know that the one who was speaking to them, all these great words of, of the prophets, of Moses, that the Christ was to go to the cross, the suffering servant. It was then when he broke bread and gave it to them that they recognized that same meal that Jesus had with his disciples. And they said, oh, he was with us. That's why our hearts were strangely warm. Maybe in these days, you, you just feel like you just need to shut the door, lock it, and walk away. And staying home and, and pausing is a great thing in, the, in, this, in these days. But maybe it's not the doors to their house that we need to unlock and open. But maybe it's the door to our heart. That we would have our hearts and our minds transformed by the renewing of the Spirit within us. That we would love as He would love. That we would care for those around us. Not just love because we have to love, but because the love of the Father so fills us that we want to love and show His grace and mercy. As obedient children, as followers of Jesus, as, as those who have a living hope, do not be conformed to the former things of life the former lust, the former things in which was yours in ignorance, which only amounted to nothing. But like the one who is holy, who called you on this journey, be holy yourselves in all your behavior. You may think that's a hard task. If you're trying to do it yourself, it's a hard task. But the one who sent Jesus, the one who gives us, fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit, is the one who transforms us. That we would no longer be conformed to those past ways, but that we would journey with Him and be transformed in a way that the world would know that yes, we are different. That yes, I, but we are people of love. The love of the Father, the obedience of the Son. So, along this journey, 
I pray that our minds would be transformed. That we would prepare our minds for, for what's to be. Not to get so far ahead that we don't just sit and we need to sit back and then allow the Spirit to work in our lives. We may be called to join Him on the journey. No matter where that journey brings, brings us. But that our hearts and our minds be strangely warmed in the midst of this journey. He's a God that cares. He's a God that loves. I don't know where you are in the length of this journey and in the midst of this journey of this walk with Christ. Maybe you're still early on and maybe you're, you're just trying to understand His love and, and, and basking in that love that He has for you. Maybe you've been in this journey for a while. Maybe you're learning new things. Maybe you just become stagnant. I want us all to know, maybe you haven't even started the journey. Maybe right now you're just feeling that sense of God tugging on your heart and saying, hey, I love you. That Jesus, my son, died for you and is giving you new life. I would encourage you just to listen to that voice and to lean into him. Maybe you need to have a conversation and I'd love for you to have a conversation with me. Feel free to reach out for a private message. Or maybe you're saying, Pastor Nate, I just feel alone. I feel like the journey that, that Jesus is there, but I don't recognize him. You stop and just open your heart to him. I believe in these days, in this these journeys, we all are on a different journey, we're all going through different things, and we're all facing different obstacles, different persecutions maybe, or different circumstances in life that we just don't have the answers for. But there is hope. And he's calling you to continue to be his son, to be his daughter, to rest in his love and his mercy. Do you hear those last words? Since you have been, since you have, in obedience to the truth, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. From which you have been born again, not of seed, which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord abides forever. And this is the word which was preached to you. The word that was preached to you is the hope that Jesus is the Son of God. That, that we are called to love in the midst of being foreigners and aliens. May the love of Christ be with you. May you continue to bask in His love and His mercy. May you continue to prepare your mind for action. Keep sober in spirit and fix your hope completely on the grace of to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What a day that will be when Jesus we will see. May our eyes be open to see him as we are made new. Journey. We're all on a different journey. But we're all on the same journey because we're journeying with Jesus. Grace and peace be to you.
receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and give you peace. May you know that you have a living hope and a new life in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.